All right, folks, let's prove this conjecture. We're going to prove this statement for all positive integer values of n. First of all, don't forget the basis step. We have to verify that domino one falls. <laughs> we can't just yell fall, right? Even with my breath. Uh, uh, we need to show that domino one falls. We need to show that p sub one is true. Verify that proposition or statement, p sub one is true. That is, show that this is true, verify it's true in the case where n equals one. So this statement, what is this statement in the case where n equals one? All right, well, and then in red, I'll emphasize the parts you need to write. All right, well, the left-hand side, when n is one, this all compresses down to just the one over here. The sum of the first one positive integer is just one. And then you plug in n equals one on the right-hand side, one times the quantity one plus one all over two. And then you verify that one equals one. So you should write this and this. Okay, and of course, one equals one is a true statement. This demonstrates that p sub one is true because we've shown that p sub one is equivalent to the true statement one equals one the basis step. You must remember the basis step. A lot of students forget it. But remember, the first domino has to fall. Otherwise, the dominoes are just standing there. <laughs> remember this. Don't lose easy points. So that wasn't the hard part. <laughs> the hard part is the inductive step. Uh, by the way, let's say that we wanted to prove a statement p sub n for all integers n such that n is greater than or equal to seven, let's say, uh, then we would use uh, p sub seven as our basis step. Uh, in our stamps problem, uh, I guess we start with p sub six, six cents, right? So it's not always p sub one corresponding to the basis step, but it often is. Okay, now the inductive step. The inductive step. Now this is a step where we verify that whenever a domino falls, it will also knock over the next domino down. If one falls, then two falls. If two falls, then three falls, and so forth. A domino falling uh, means that the corresponding proposition, p sub n, whatever n is here, is a true statement. Falling means true statement. All right. Let k, be a fixed positive integer, okay, which we might write like this in shorthand. Some books use n, uh, similar to the way we used n up here, although n here kind of varies in a sense. So I think it's more proper to use k, but if you use n, that's fine also, just be consistent. But we're assuming for now that k is a fixed positive integer. It's a constant as we make these arguments. First off, Assume that p sub k is true. And this assumption, this very important assumption, is called the inductive hypothesis, which I might abbreviate as IH. Okay, what this means is that we're going to assume that domino k falls. Okay. We're going to assume that domino k falls. Assume that the kth domino has fallen. Now, you should state what p sub k is. What is the statement p sub k? Well, basically, you're rewriting the statement p sub n where you're replacing n with k. Again, some books just run with n and just copy this down. OK, I think it's better to, to assume that k is a fixed positive integer for our argument here. Assume that p sub k is true, OK, which means this. p sub k is this where we replace the p sub n statement uh, with p sub k. We substitute n equals k. So we assume this. Now, we have to show that the proposition or statement p sub k plus 1 is then true. So given that we're assuming that domino k has fallen, we need to show We need to show that 
domino k plus one will also fall. So assuming that domino k falls, we're going to show that k plus one will also fall, presumably as a consequence of domino k falling. Incidentally, this here is an example of weak induction. In strong induction, we assume that all previous dominoes uh, down to one have all fallen. That's for strong induction. For weak induction, we just need the, the previous domino to fall uh, and showing that the next domino will then fall. All right. So we need to show that P sub K plus one is then true. What is P sub K plus one? Well, we take the original statement for P sub N, we substitute N equals K plus one. So K plus one is the last positive integer to be added in. We replace N with K plus one in the right side as well. All right, so, uh, Here's P sub K plus one. It might help to have a, a duplicate copy of this. There we go, duplicate. <laughs> All right. So let's go to the statement. Okay, over here. All right. So here's P sub N in general. Okay, and we're substituting n with k plus one. So here we have the sum of the first k plus one positive integers, one plus two plus three plus yada, 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 plus, and then k plus one equals, all right, this is kind of tricky. <laughs> Every time we see an n, we substitute it with the quantity k plus one. So substitute n with k plus one. Substitute n with k plus one. Now n plus one becomes k plus one, all plus one. Well, that becomes k plus two. So we can simplify this right-hand side a little bit right now. Okay, so we get k plus, the quantity k plus one times the quantity k plus two all over two. Okay. So like in, in a trig verification problem, we can think of this now as our new target. The target is going to be this over here. Let's do it. Let's show this. But we're going to need the inductive hypothesis, this thing here, as a crucial part of proving that this is now going to be true. How do we do it? All right, let's copy the left-hand side. Okay, that's, that's, this is the thing we have to show now. All right, let's copy the left-hand side the sum of the first k plus one positive integers. Now, it's going to be helpful. Uh, let's assume that k is big enough. It's going to be helpful to write the second to last term over here, the second to last integer over here. So we have the sum of the first k positive integers plus k plus one over here. And now we can apply the inductive hypothesis to all this. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to k. Because according to the IH, the inductive hypothesis, we're assuming that this sum is equal to this fraction, k times the quantity k plus 1 all over 2. So we can do a substitution. We have the right to substitute all of this with this nice fraction over here, k times the quantity k plus 1 all over 2, which is a nice closed form formula. We no longer have the dot, dot, dot ellipsis stuff anymore. This is now a closed form formula. In fact, when you look at the, the sum here, this fraction plus this quantity over here, we have a closed form expression for this over here. Okay, now we need to hit the target. The target is this, the quantity k plus one times the quantity k plus two all over two. right there. Okay, so now let's 
add these two rational expressions. Right now, this is over one, okay? But I want to have a two in the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply this fraction by two over two. I'm multiplying by one creatively. So then we get this fraction over here plus two times the quantity k plus one all over two. We now have a common denominator. We can add the fractions, keep the common denominator, and add the numerators. k times the quantity k plus one plus two times the quantity k plus one. And then from factoring, what can we factor out in the top here? We can factor out k plus one on either the right side or the left side. Uh, in the end, we need to have k plus one on the left so that we hit the, the formula over here verbatim. Now visually, it looks like we should factor k plus one out to the right, that's fine, but eventually switch these. Eventually, we need k plus one on the left to hit the target verbatim, right on the dot. The other factor, once we factor out k plus one, the other factor is k plus two over here, right? I'll put that in green, right? Remember we had the k times this plus two times that, we have k plus two. The idea is that we're factoring in such a way that we're reversing the distributive property, right? Uh, because if you, if you distribute k times this thing, right, plus two times this thing, the k plus one. Again, if necessary, switch the factors, we hit the target verbatim on the dot. And I should put all of this in red. You should write all the, well, you don't have to write this. Well, actually, you know, that's a good idea, actually. Uh, uh, mention the IH, like maybe by the IH, at least write by the IH, by the inductive hypothesis. Okay. You should write all of this down. Bear in mind, if you skip, say, if you skip, say, this step here, it's, it's okay if you then write this step. And I'll believe you if you go from here to here, for example. Okay. So you may not have to write every single step, but it's a pretty good idea to write all these steps. You would skip from here to here, of course. Okay. You would factor out k plus 1 to the left. Okay. And really... We're done. <laughs> We're done. Uh, remember that all this applies even if uh, k is relatively small. Then this thing compresses as necessary. Okay. Conclusion. Because we've done it. We've shown that uh, from the basis step, domino 1 falls, right? From the basis step, domino 1 falls. And from the objective step, if domino k falls, then domino k plus 1 also falls. So we've done it. We can now conclude that p sub n, which is the original statement up here, okay, p sub n, this proposition on n, is true for all positive integers n. The three dots sometimes indicates a conclusion, like there, it says therefore, therefore. P sub n, this proposition is true for all positive integers n. Uh, sometimes QED indicates end of proof. It's Latin. It's a Latin acronym. That which was to have been proven. It's nice to put a final flourish on things. We've done it. We have proven infinitely many statements at once. We have proven P sub n for every, for all positive integers n. We have proven infinitely many statements. Very impressive. And then you can apply this formula, right? So now you can, uh, uh, you, you can find the sum of the first thousand positive integers very quickly, the sum of the first 5,000 positive integers very quickly by using this handy dandy closed form formula. It's pretty nice. Uh, there are also other formulas for sums of powers. Uh, the sums of the squares of the first n positive integers, and so on and so forth. Finally, if you like the stamps problem at the outset, uh, if you wish, you can use induction to prove that every amount of postage greater than or equal to 12 cents can be formed by just using 4 and 5 cent stamps. Going back to the stamps problem we introduced this section with.
Okay, proof by mathematical induction.